Hi there. Now, in the past, we've discussed the scalar or dot product between two vectors a and b inclined at an angle theta to one another. Remember, a dot b was defined as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle theta. And we use this, for instance, to find the angle between two vectors and uh, also to find the scalar product form for the equation of a plane. Now, what I want to do is introduce you to another type of product. It's called the vector product for two vectors, a and b. And it's defined as a crossed b. We say cross, not times. So, uh, a cross b, or the vector cross product, is defined as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times, this time, the sine of the angle between the two vectors a and b. And then we've got this vector on the end here. It's a unit normal vector perpendicular to a and b. And there's a special rule that we've got to observe when we do the cross product. And the best way I can think of showing you this is by opening a wine bottle. Now, suppose you had a corkscrew. You'd need to turn it clockwise in order to make the corkscrew go into the cork. And when we do the vector cross product, it's very similar. When we go from the vector A to the vector B, we turn in this direction, where the angle theta, as you can see, is marked here. And so we're turning in a clockwise sense here. And when we turn in a clockwise sense, the normal vector, a cross b, is this one here. It's perpendicular to a and b. And it's going in, if you like, in this direction, into the bottle. So this is a crossed with b perpendicular then to a and b. Let's just mark in those perpendicular directions. That's perpendicular to b, and if I just mark that in there, that's perpendicular to a. And the unit normal, n here, with a little circumflex over the top, will be a vector then in that direction. So that's the unit normal. And the magnitude of this vector, a cross b, will obviously be magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the sine of the angle between the vectors a and b. Now the vector cross product does have uses. One of the uses that we'll be seeing is with finding the shortest distance between two lines and also to find out volumes of various solids. Also with planes we'll be working with it. So it is a very useful tool to have. But before we get to that part, what I want to do is just look at some standard results. Just put a title up here. Some standard results. We're going to be working with the unit vectors i, j and k. And if I look at some axes, set up some axes in the x, y, z directions where we've got the unit vectors i, j and k respectively, then I want to work first of all with parallel vectors. And if I was to do i crossed with i, what result would we get? Well, according to the definition here, i crossed with i is going to be the magnitude of i, which is 1, times the magnitude of the other i, still 1, times the sine of the angle in between the two vectors. Well, that clearly is 0 degrees, so just put that sine of 0 degrees. And we've got a vector which is perpendicular to those two, the unit normal. Well, the sine of 0 is 0, so this is just going to come to 0. So we end up with i crossed with i as being 0. And similarly, we're going to get exactly the same results when we do j crossed with j. It's going to be 0, and the same applies when we do k crossed with k. That too is going to be 0. So, as I say, we're going to be using these results later on. 
Now, the other thing we need to look at is the results that we get when we do perpendicular vectors like I crossed with J and so on. First of all, though, I'm going to start with K crossed with I. So if we do K crossed with I, then this is going to be the magnitude of K, which is 1, times the magnitude of I, which is 1, times the sine of the angle between them. And if I look at turning from K to I, like so, in a clockwise sense, then that's going to be the sine of 90 degrees. Then we've got the unit normal vector perpendicular to K and I. But we've got to think about what the sense is. okay? And to do that, think of the corkscrew. And I've got it here. You'll notice that if we're going from K to I in a clockwise sense, we're turning our corkscrew clockwise and it's going to want to move in the J direction. So what we've got then is that normal, that unit normal vector is just going to be J. Now the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So what we end up with is that K crossed with I is just J. Now what happens if we do I crossed with K? Do we get exactly the same answer? Well, I'll just remove this, but this time we're turning from I to K. So our angle is turning in this direction. This will be our theta, our 90 degrees. So according to the definition, it's going to be the magnitude of I, which is 1, times the magnitude of K, which is 1, times the sine of the angle between I and K, which will be 90 degrees. And then we need that normal vector, the unit normal. Now we started with I. We're turning clockwise to K. It doesn't look as if we're turning clockwise, but we've got to view this in the, this direction. If I set up a corkscrew, then we've got this situation. We've got to view it in this direction. We're turning clockwise and the corkscrew would want to come in in the opposite sense to J. So what we've got here is going to be minus J. And so sine of 90 is 1. We end up with minus J. So can you see that it is not the same answer? K crossed with I is not commutative with I crossed with K. We get a negative result. K crossed with I is negative I crossed with K. So what about the other perpendicular vectors? What would we get then if we did I crossed with J or J crossed with I? Maybe you might like to pause the video at this stage and just work these ones out. We've also got J crossed with K and K crossed with J. So give you a moment just to think about working those out. Well, for I crossed with J, the answer is it's K. And you should have got that result if you think of this particular corkscrew. We're turning from I to J, so it's turning in an angle like that, in that direction, so we've got to come up underneath here. Turning from I to J gives us a vector in the direction of K, alright? So it's going to equal K. And that means that J crossed with I will be in the opposite sense, and you'll find you get minus K for that one. Now when it comes to J crossed with K, then you should have found that you got I as a result. And again, if we apply the corkscrew to that, we're going from J to K, so we want to go from there round to there. And applying the corkscrew, in this direction, you'll notice that what we've got 
is that the corkscrew is going to want to go in in the eye direction. As I say, it looks a bit odd. It looks like I'm turning anti-clockwise here, but do remember you've got to go back around this diagram and look in this direction, okay? So the result is I. As for K cross J, it's going to turn out to be negative I. So I hope that's given you some idea then how we use the vector cross product, its definition. And we should be able to see from these results that it's not commutative, that A cross B is equal to minus B cross A. And also showed you how we applied the corkscrew rule. Okay, when we turn the corkscrew in a clockwise direction, then it's the direction that that would go in is the normal to the two vectors that we are crossing. Now, this is the first video using the vector cross product. In the next part, I'll explore this further, where we look at not just the unit vectors i, j's and k's, but we're looking at general results for the vectors a and b. And I'll show you a quick way that we can cross two vectors.